ladies and gentlemen, please welcome your host Cameron Limes with special guests Nathan Haskell and Aaron Manning and live performances by Butch's Bow. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to episode three of Late on Cable 8. I am your host, Cameron Limes with the Crooked Chair. And as always, it was we doing late on Cable 8, the news. Oscars! This will be the first year that the Oscars do not have a host. The Oscars had nominated Kevin Hart to be the host, but after some tweets were dug up that he had a long time ago, that he tweeted out a long time ago, he decided to resign and not take that position. So, for the first time ever, the Oscars might actually be underneath three hours. It won't be the entire long speeches, and they're drawn out, oh my gosh. Thank the Lord. Moving forward to the next news story. We love free food as college students. That's just the way it is, that's just the way we are. Yeah. Woo! Right, exactly, free food is what we do. I mean, you, you have a location with free food, guaranteed you're going to have some college students there. So Tokyo is, has decided to offer soba noodles to people who ride the subway before rush hour. This is to ease the rush hour flow of the, tra of the traffic, excuse me, on these subways, because it gets really packed. So, while you're eating your soba noodles, you can smell that awkward piss, throw up, and sweet smell of fresh air. But hey, you got your noodles, so enjoy those. Make sure you enjoy those. If Wazoo started doing this, I think I'd actually get up for class. They offered like, I don't know, maybe some pizza or a Pop-Tart or even just a bag of unpopped popcorn. I don't know, I'm having it, it's free. I'll take it for whatever it is. Next story. The Rainforest Cafe has closed all of its doors in Washington State. I have been in mourning since I heard this news. Um, I'm quite upset about it. I was hoping to take my kids there because I wanted them to have the same experience I did. Um, as a child. Uh, now, if you don't know what the Rainforest Cafe is, it is basically a, a restaurant that they tried to place in an artificial jungle. So with this, they have all sorts of animals that shouldn't be there, to be honest. They shouldn't be there, but they're there. So you got alligators, you got gorillas that like scream, monkeys up in the ceiling that also scream, you got an elephant that's just doing its noise. I don't even know what that classifies as, but it's just really loud and obnoxious. And you're trying to have a conversation with your parents about what you did last night, but here is the elephant and this guy named Tracy Tree announcing every few minutes who he is just in the background in your head and you can't talk to your parents anymore. And then you're supposed to throw coins into the little alligator at the end of the date, at the end of the food, but you can't because you pay with card and not with cash because it broke and you don't know what's going on and it's just a traumatizing experience and I loved it. I absolutely adored it. The food was always undercooked. There was always a baby that was just screaming its head off in the background, just like a plane. It was lovely. I don't understand why they closed their doors. I will be flying to Las Vegas post haste to see if I can get, so I don't even know what they serve there. It's really just a whole bunch of kids food. I don't know why parents decided to bring their kids there, but hey, it builds character. Next story, Groundhog Day. So Punkatani Phil, the famed groundhog decided to poke his head out of the ground and he did not see a shadow, which means we have more winter ahead for the United States. We are already in this insane winter vortex. It's just crazy how much snow we've been getting recently. Outside, currently, there is a foot of snow in some places. I thought it was ice, so I stepped on it, but I went all the way up to my knee in just snow. That's why I'm sitting down currently and no one shall see this leg. It's totally wet. <laughs> Moving forward, it, it's an insane cold snap, so we hope that this groundhog sees its shadow pretty soon because I can't do this much longer. I got one pair of shoes, man. I'm not gonna make it. Our next story is about sun dogs. Now, sun dogs, there's a whole bunch of science behind this. I mean, it's. I can't explain, I'm not a science major, I'm a communications major, I don't know this stuff. But when you look up in the sky, because of the ice particles in the sky, you can see 
two tiny suns and one big sun. I don't know, don't look up at the sun too long to try spotting it, but it should be super cool to see. We got pictures of it, it's awesome. And with that, we have an archive with Spencer Knudsen, and he's gonna show you a little bit about the past of Cable A. Stay right there, we'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. Hi, I'm Spencer Knudsen, another actor here on the show. But I'm sure you already knew that, as I expect to become fairly famous from acting here on Cable 8. What's that? Oh, nobody watches this. <laughs> right, well, thank you then, dear viewer, for tuning in this evening. Tonight we'll be watching a more recent clip from the Cable 8 Files. It's a mockumentary sitcom from 2016 called Project Palouse. It was produced by Ari Wyatt, our now Cable 8 president, and directed by McKenna Martin. Here you go. Brotherhood, there's nothing like it. Everywhere you go, you got your bros by your side. Life's a party if you live it right. So join Greek life. It'll change you, man. Cute, right? This show featured many dedicated Cable 8 actors I'm sure you loyal Cable 8 fans have come to love. Director McKenna Martin is currently working as a production assistant in LA and working on growing her photography business. This show fostered some real gems in the Cable 8 staff. Well, that's all the time we have here on the Cable 8 Archive. Don't forget this face. Welcome back everyone. We are back with some more news. And as always, let's hit the first story post haste. So the Super Bowl this year was agonizingly slow. I mean, it, I, if you're a football fanatic, you liked it. It was a good game. There was a lot of defense. So it was wonderful. But for us casual people, it was terrible. There was hardly any touchdowns scored. We knew the Patriots were going to win from the beginning, and they won again. So Tom Brady, congratulations again. The, the most exciting part of that show was Maroon 5 performing, and then, and then, get this, this is how you know Millennial did not plan this event, all right, because they teased, they teased a little bit of Spongebob in there. They threw in a little bit of my boy Spun, uh, Squidward, excuse me, with his tentacles, I heard Sweet Victory in the background, I was like, mm, give it to me, and then you know what happened? Psych, they cut out with sicko mode, and they ruin it with a comet. Come on, come on, we asked for one thing, we asked for our childhood show, Spongebob. I want that in the Super Bowl. I want to see that. I don't want to see Maroon 5. I don't want to see Adam Levine shirtless. That matters not to me. He has a really long body. It's kind of weird. It's like human centipede. Think about it. Honestly, think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Moving forward to our next news story. 21 Savage turns out to be British. Now, this was news to everybody. This happened during the Super Bowl, by the way, and it was more intense than the Super Bowl. More intense than anything else that happened during the Super Bowl, including Human Centipede. He almost got deported. He may, he may even still be deported. We, we don't know. He has a trial coming up pretty soon here. So apparently, he lived in some islands that were UK territory, and that's where he grew up, and he moved to Atlanta when he was seven. So he technically grew up in Atlanta, but not really. So he hasn't been deported yet. We're crossing our fingers. Hope that Sir 21 will stay with us. Um, all of his songs will not have to have a new twist. It will be eight quids in his bank account, not um, eight, eight something else in his bank account, because I'm blanking on it right now. Our next news story. Girl Scout cookies are almost back, ladies and gentlemen. We are saved. 
we are saved, we can pack on those calories, we can be proud of it because it's for a good cause now. Anyways, a Girl Scout named Kiki Pascal, excuse me if I said your name wrong, I apologize, um, made a parody of the song Money by Cardi B. Uh, this song, uh, this, this parody went viral, even Cardi B saw it, so we figured that you guys should see it too. So here it is. Pigments are the best. Savannah smiles delish. Pussy does a chocolate bliss. Tackle bombs divine. Turn castle blows my mind. Hey, that really grinds. Money. On my shirt, but I need it. Sound cookies to get some. Money. Please real nut monopoly. Money. I got girls in my troop. Cookies to the roof. I got girls in my troop. Cookies to the roof. Money. So, as you saw in that, did you see? Did you see how many boxes of Girl Scout cookies she had in there? I mean, she was surrounded. It looked like the Game of Thrones, like, sword chair. She was just Girl Scout cookies everywhere. I loved it. So and so, that I think I'm going to buy some Girl Scout cookies from you. So be on the lookout. I'm coming for you. I'm looking forward to those Girl Scout cookies. Our next news story. Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg. She's alive and kicking, ladies and gentlemen. She's still out and about. Some new pictures have um, come up of her out and about with her, just out walking after her cancer treatment, which we are so glad that she's still alive. Um, she is an absolute bad A. So much so that they're making a movie about her. And she's actually old enough to be my great, 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 grandma. Love you, G-Ma. Keep it tight. Love you lots. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, please don't go anywhere. We love you all. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back. Not you. I'm telling you, Lindsay Lohan did have a twin sister. No, 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 no. That was like definitely green screen or something, bro. No, her name is Tiffany. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. Cool. So, since this is 2002, we have founded the best club in all school, Healy's Club. Hmm. That was very expositional of you. Well, yeah. This is the first meeting. My name is Ashley, and I'm the president, and this is Healy's Club, where we talk all things Healy's. You don't have to own a pair of Healy's, but it is highly encouraged. Now let's everybody get acquainted. Let's go around and say where you're from, your name, and why you love those Heelys. Oh, well, hi, I'm Hazel. I'm from Las Vegas, at Nevada. And uh, I just love Heelys. They're so trendy and fashionable and just all around cool. <laughs> well, I'm Liam, and I'm from Duval, Washington, and I love Heelys because they're the perfect blend between skateboard and wheel. I'm Addison, I'm from Bellingham, Washington, and I just like Heelys because I can zip around on them. Uh, I'm Ben, I'm from Yakima. Heelys are pretty cool, I guess. Awesome, thanks everyone. Uh, I am from Spokane, Washington myself, and I love Heelys because they are both fun uh, functional and fashionable. Um, does anyone have any questions about the club? Not to be rude, but uh, y'all jumped on the Healy's bandwagon pretty quickly. Do you think they're gonna, like, age well? Oh, definitely. I mean, the mix didn't age well, but it's still available. What? Uh, <laughs> never mind. Are you trying to be meta or something? Um, if this was meta, Lauren would be here. <laughs> I am killing it today. Whoa, 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 seriously, Ashley. We don't want to get too meta on them. I don't know, man. A pug in a pug costume is pretty freaking cute. Aww. Aww. I'm gonna name Aww. Aww. Cute Aww. Aww. You guys know that this self-aware, self-referential stuff is only gonna be funny to like two people, right? Well, that's okay, Ben. Creating art isn't about pleasing people. It's about expressing yourself and having fun. Yes. 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 Oh my God. Yes. Okay, great. So I thought because this was the first meeting, we could go, like, kind of brainstorm on stuff to do, what the club should do. Um, so, oh, I was thinking maybe on, uh, maybe we could wear our Heelys uh, one day a week. Maybe, maybe every Wednesday, kind of like, like the movie Mean Girls. 
mean what? Yes, oh my gosh, I love that idea. And like we could wear like the same like clothes and stuff and just be all matchy match. Dude, get out of my head. Oh my God. Okay, okay, let me, uh, here we go. What? Can, can anyone even read that? Uh, sure, I mean, it's what we all just said, you know. Same clothes, Heelys on Wednesdays. Oh, duh. <laughs> did, did you read that? Hmm? Did you read what was on the board? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, could you repeat that one more time? Did, did you say something about the movie Creed? No. Can you read? Nope, cannot read. Okay, does anyone have any ideas for recruitment? We have five people here and that's a great start. Oh my gosh. I have such a great idea. So we do a 24 hour Healy marathon. We're just all, all in Healy's for like 24 hours and then we just keep healing, healing and healing until we like pass out or fall or like who knows what's gonna happen in Healy's for 24 hours. Okay, okay, bit hardcore, but I'll write it down. Uh -huh. Or you know, something normal, like a bake sale. Ben, this club is not meant to be normal. This is an institution where people will and can express themselves. This is America! This is America. And, if I'm honest, at the moment, it's pretty perfect. Uh, oh, sorry. Until, so right now it's pretty perfect. Uh, until about 17 years from now where things are a little bit uncertain. But right now, it is pretty dang great. Sure. Uh, anyway, I think this club is off to a great start. Cut. Great job, everybody. Uh, bring me a mocha. How are you doing? I want to go. Where's my sandwich? Mocha and lemon loaf. Is this even funny? I don't know. It doesn't matter. You know how I like it. Sprinkle the cinnamon on top of the whipped cream and extra ice because I really don't actually. I am so mad. Everybody, so tonight we have a very special guest. He's on the Wazoo Marching Band. He's absolutely awesome and amazing. Please welcome Nathan Haskell. How's it going? How's it going, my friend? All right, awesome. So tell us a little about a little bit about yourself. Where you're from, major, all that good stuff. Uh, I'm a freshman. I'm from Arlington, Washington, which is like an hour north of Seattle. Um, and my major is poli sci and psych. Okay. I don't know which yet. Oh, you're still yeah. deciding in the middle. Okay, mm -hmm. that, that, that's fair. I still haven't decided mine, so I get that. Uh, what made you want to join the marching band? Uh, well, my cousin, she's uh, uh, she's a member and a year older than me, so she was uh, telling me a lot of good stuff about it when I was still in high school. I've been involved in m music for most of my life, so I figured I don't want to stop that. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. And that segues perfectly into the next question. How long have you been involved in music? I started playing piano begrudgingly in fourth grade and then uh, started actually enjoying music around high school, but I kept playing it. Uh, and then I did trombone in, uh, starting in sixth grade. Did your parents make you play music when you were growing up? Eh, a little. I mostly just wanted to be like my cousin, to be honest, but, awesome. then, but then they just told me I had to afterwards. That makes sense, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, I've been down that road before. How many people are in the marching band overall? Uh, there's 230 members, including Color Guard, uh, 210 people with instruments. 210, wow. That's just an insane number of, of people. I mean, mm -hmm. Cable is a very small group, so I can't imagine how, how you have to meet everybody or do you try to meet everybody? Um, some people do. I just stick to like five-ish people from, from the section that's 200 people's a lot of names to learn, especially like when you're just starting out on campus and still trying to learn where everything is. Yeah. So like you learn, you learn your section, its names and get to know all of them and then a few people here and there. That's awesome, that's awesome. Are you involved in any other music groups around campus? Um, I'm in the symphonic band, which is about half marching band members, uh, Butcher's Bones, which is 100% marching band members, and Pet Band, which is also mostly marching band. 
uh, pet band plays on the basketball games, um, Butch's Bones on game days, or football game days, I should say, uh, wanders around the tailgate and plays for uh, crowds there, and then um, Symphonic Band, it's just another concert ensemble. Okay, okay, so you, you are literally spread out everywhere. How do you have time for classes in between all that? Uh, I'm taking UCOR. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's how I have time for all of that. Um, I don't know. You can make time for it. It's not that huge of a commitment, and I find it more relaxing than stressful. Okay, that, that's nice. That's, that's a good way to, to think about it. Is there anyone that you would like to shout out while you're here, on camera, on the YouTubes, on cable television? Uh, again, I would like to mention the aforementioned cousin, um, the Lizzie Burnham, since she's the one who's gotten me involved in marching band here and just kept me interested in music for so long. I really appreciate that. And my section leader, Miguel Carroll, uh, who's in Butch's Bones. Uh, he helped teach me all of the basics of marching because it's a lot different from my high school and um, like about wazoo culture and how to get my stuff together. Nice, 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 nice. And um, we asked our followers, our fans on Twitter, what was their favorite band memory? And I figure since we have you here, we might as well ask you. So what is your favorite band memory ever? Um, I'd probably have to say the Alamo Bowl. It was really cool getting to go to a city I haven't been before um, with basically all friends. And we had a lot of free time to go and explore. They had these cool scooters that you could just, it was like an Uber, but for a scooter. And you just got to ride around nice. the city like 20 miles an hour. It's really fun. Um, cool. And of course, the game was amazing. It's really lucky that I got here for such an important season. Mm. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I just want to thank you for being on the show. As we said earlier, like you're, you're so busy and I'm sure your schedule is jam packed. So thank you for that. We appreciate it. I'm pretty sure I've seen you in the audience a few times. You've shown your face and we appreciate that. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank Everyone you. naked. Flip-flops and shorts are a summer staple. Flip-flops and jeans could cost you your life. Flip-flops and jeans are going to bring what not to wear back. Flip-flops and jeans are what not to wear. During violent crimes, 92.3% of the perpetrators wear flip-flops with jeans. When I was nine, a hitman killed my dad. He was wearing flip-flops and jeans. Ever since then, I can't look at flip-flops or jeans. I was on my way to an Andy Grammer concert wearing flip-flops and jeans when I stepped off a curb and ripped my toenail off. Nah, nah, honey, I wasn't good. flip-flops and jeans. Sponsored by Laid on Cable 8. Welcome back, everybody. So, we have one more guest with us here tonight. She is in the marching band, the basketball band, and the volleyball band. She is a senior clarinet player. Please welcome Aaron Manning, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, yes. Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I'm sure you're very busy and whatnot. Too busy. Oh, she's too busy. Awesome. awesome. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Where are you from? Where, what's your major? Um, I am double majoring in journalism and media production as well as women's studies. And I am from Marysville, which is a town <coughs> just south of Arlington and much better. Nice. <laughs> nice. So we just spoke to Nathan just a few minutes ago and we wanted to get a senior perspective on the band. So with that, because, and clearly you've been on it for, how long have you been on the band so far? Uh, the Cougar Marching Band, this was my fourth and final year. Marching Band as a whole, eight. Got you, got you, that's so cool. So what do you love most about being on the band? I think being in band, it's 
a very quick way to make 200 friends. And for an introvert, I'm surprised that I make that many friends. <laughs> um, it's just, it's always a good time. It's always a good laugh. It's a good kind of outlet to just get everything that happened in the day out and just kind of play your music, entertain people, and it's a good time. So are you one of the people that tries to meet all 200 and something, something members of the band? I don't try to meet them, but I try to make myself obnoxious enough that they know who I am. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. That's fair. That's me and Cable 8 for sure. What's the most challenging thing about band? I think just the time that it takes up. Because being a <coughs> senior, I'm entering all like the super hard classes. Shout out to television production. And um, I think just because you rehearse three to four times a week at like 5 p.m. So it's kind of awkwardly breaking up your afternoons. So like jobs are really hard to get. And I think just trying to get into a rhythm where you can sit down and do homework for a few hours is really kind of difficult to do then. I would say that's just the hardest part is that it's just such a weird chunk of time in your afternoon and that there's so much. And not to mention game days are like an all day thing because we rehearse six hours before kickoff. So if it's like an 11 or noon kickoff, we're out there at five, six a.m. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow, that is impressive. That's that's determination. That's, it's commitment. That is a lot of commitment right there. That was the word I was looking for. So how many hours a week during, like, let's say, peak football season mm -hmm. are you spending with the marching band? Well, over the week, if it's a game week, we rehearse Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday from 5.15 to 7. So already that's just under eight hours. And then the game day is like a 10-hour day. Wow. Wow, so, that is insane. Almost 20 hours on a game week. That is crazy. Why do you think arts, and more specifically music, is important to students and important to, to Wazoo? I think it's important because it's, I think it's so much a part of our lives that we may not realize it. Like TV, art, paintings, drawings, music, all of that is art and we use it so much on a daily basis, like think about the last time that you like opened up Spotify, Apple Music, whatever. That music, they're all artists. And I think there's so much of an emphasis on STEM in schools that we forget how integral the arts are to everyday life. And like WSU, the fight song that are that's sung at football games, like that wouldn't have happened without musicians, without artists. And I think it tends to be overlooked, but I think it's just really important because it makes kind of our world what it is. And it's also just kind of on a more basic side, it's an outlet, it's a fun time for musicians and artists. Like it's a way to kind of express yourself and just have fun in a very stressful world. Yeah, yeah, music is definitely, and arts are definitely crucial to, to school and just in general. How would students get involved into music? When are auditions for this? Yeah, uh, so the marching band is actually non-audition. Anyone who wants to play uh, can join us. And right now, uh, we usually have signups kind of in the early June thing, uh, the early June time of year. So like a live, if you're a freshman, that's a time when people generally sign up. Um, and then the returners will typically know if they want to return or not, and they can just express that interest then. Um, and then Symphonic Band is another non-audition group. If you want to play more kind of classical concert music, you can do that. And then the audition groups, uh, there's the orchestra and the wind ensemble. Those are the two audition concert bands. And then for more pet marching band stuff, um, the volleyball and the basketball pet bands are auditions. And those generally take place in September, October. Wow, all right. When or where can we find School of Music events? Where do we find more information about those? Yes, we are all up on Facebook. So just look up WSU School of Music, Cougar Marching Band, whatever kind of organization you want to find. That's all on Facebook. Uh, I know the CMB and the School of Music, I believe, is on Twitter. And the CMB, I think, has an Instagram. I'm not, I deleted all my social media. So I'm, I don't remember, but... I know for a fact that we are on Facebook and they post all the events and kind of all the sign up dates, all the audition dates, all of that's on there. So nice. that's a really good way to stay in touch. Nice. Anyone that you want to shout out while you're here in front of 
all these wonderful people. Yes, I would love to start out by shouting out my amazing clarinet section. Uh, it's been an honor working with you guys for the last four years. I'm sad to go. Um, and especially shout out to Kevin Kissinger, my partner in crime, other section leader for the last two years. Um, and then unrelated shout out to Virtuality. Woo, yeah. Ooh, I'm on that show. Support. Yeah. Um, that's about it. I love, I love my section. They've made the last four years all worth it. Nice, nice. Shout out mom, by the way. Always shout out mom. Always, always, always shout, shout out, out mom. mom. What's your favorite band memory that you've had over the last four years? I'm sure you have a bunch, but what's one that stands out to you? This is difficult for me. I've always, I'm always asked this question as like someone this old and leaving the band, and I don't know if I have one single answer for you. I know I've always loved the bold trips, not you, El Paso. But I always loved, <laughs> El Paso was uh, an experience. Uh, but go, being able to go to San Diego twice and then San Antonio this year, you know, these are places that I wouldn't normally be able to go. Mm -hmm. And I think just especially San Antonio this year, it was such a different environment and it was just so cool. The river walk was beautiful. Like I accidentally ran into the Alamo. I didn't plan on going but it's in the middle it's like next door to the mall and in the middle of like this huge like city i thought it was going to be on the outskirts and like, i left the mall and i'm just like oh there's the alamo cool don't forget and <laughs> it was i don't know like it was just so weird to have like this piece of history right in the middle of just like skyscrapers and oh, parks crazy. and stuff like i didn't think that's what it would be like but the whole trip was just super fun i'm really glad that like San Antonio, winning the Alamo Bowl, that whole experience, that was a way to go out. And I'm very excited that that was my last bowl trip. That's awesome, that's awesome. We, we asked our many fans and followers on Twitter what was their favorite memory, and we picked one at random. And the winner was the Reed 97, and his answer was, crying cause I was bad, unquote. <laughs> I feel that way deep down, Reed. I feel that way deep down. All right, anyway, thank you so much for being thank here you for with having us. Me. We appreciate it. We'll be right back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for watching. So, tonight, closing out, we have Butch's Bones, the trombone ensemble. They're amazing. They follow around Butch everywhere during football games, so basically, the soundtrack to his life. So, with that, would you please welcome Alex Grunmeyer, Anna Clark, Nathan Haska, Miguel Carroll, then we got Emily Anderson, Carly Zimmerman, then we have, excuse me, Cagney Boys, Boysburg, and Hugh McGew. Take it away, guys. <laughs>